Hey everyone, in this video I'll be talking about batteries for electric cars and this video is a, a different type of presentation because the concepts I'll be going over is the, uh, from a picture perspective rather than a different text perspective. Alright, so first of all what I want to do is get into challenges, opportunities and outlook that we need for our batteries uh, assembly line to look like for 2020. So how does the assembly line look like? First of all, you have different components that go into the battery making and recycling of the battery once the duty cycle of the battery pack is uh, consumed. And approximately, the duty cycle for a battery pack is about 10 years. Alright, so the first one is the component production where the manufacturers of anode and cathode are made and the binders, electro electrolyte rods, and separators are also made. The next segment is the cell production. This is the cell production that uh, is combined, packed together, and uh, what really happens is that the cell, as our efficiency should be in producing as small as the cells can possibly be. And the reason is that if you have more production of small size cells, that carry much more large amount of uh, power what's going to happen is that the battery pack is going to have a lot of more uh, than usual cells than it really had before so the cell production is basically the production of assembly for single cells and then once the single cells are done the single cells are configured into multiple cells which is in the module production so perhaps three cells can be packed into one segment, one circuit, and then these three are made into a pack assembly. So the three can have another three pair, another three pair of it, and this thing are installed on one circuit. This circuit is basically the vehicle integration where the battery pack is connected with the cells. So the battery is getting charged as the cell has the power. And once this is done, the use of it is the uh, duty cycle of the vehicle, which is about 10 years. And once that is completed, uh, we use these cells to be recycled and reuse them. All right. Now, what I want to talk about is the trade-off that really happens when we are talking about different types of battery. So the first one here, we have an a NCA battery. So what really happens is that we want our cost to be uh, our ideal battery is what should look like this our cost should be here whereas the specific energy should be here somewhere and then the specific power should be more the safety should be more the performance should be more the lifespan should obviously be more and the cost should be as little as possible so technically this is the ideal scenario that I've drawn here but you can see that we have different types of battery packs such as LTO, LFP, uh, NMC and LMO. These are all the different batteries that uh, are being used to make the cells. Now the cells come off with different types of uh, batteries come off with different types of benefits and drawbacks. So as you can see if one has a low cost and one has a higher cost than the other but the other is providing a good performance and a good specific energy for if you were to compare LTO and NMC together this one lacks in specific energy but the cost is good enough uh, here the cost is a little bit higher so it's not that good but the specific energy is pretty good so it's respectable the safety is also a main concern because you don't want your cells to be blasting out if they're overheated so the safety is kind of a cautionable safety here whereas the safety is uh, absolutely perfect the performance is also good whereas the performance here is a little bit of a drawback so as you can see we can compare and contrast between different types of battery and make our own conclusion depending on what batteries that the manufacturers should use so this is one kind of um, issue that uh, the manufacturers need to go through and perhaps um, make a optimistic uh, conclusion about which battery cells to use alright so how do we uh, battle 
cost all right so from the year 2009 and uh, we are in 2020 but I'm giving you the statistics for 2009 so what's really happening is that first of all when we used to make the battery cells and the whole procedure to pack the battery cells into a battery pack which we talked about it over here vehicle integration uh, what's really happening is that uh, the cost of it was um, about 200 to 250 when the energy cost was 650 to 790 per kilowatt hour and as you can see over the year in the later part of 2009 that 650 has changed to 340 so what's really happening is that the cost of energy is going down because of the cost of it, the energy is going down we can make more production as you can see as it's happening here and pay less for it so more production paying less for it more production paying less for it so this is the whole um, uh, idea of the concept that as we go on over the years we are spending less amount of money for more amount of packaging of the cells all right so maybe in the cost of future what's really happening is that when we are spending about 650 to 790 in the year 2009 maybe that can be reduced 270 to 330 when the year 2020 hits all right this also is only specifically made for NCA batteries which I have mentioned over here the NCA batteries are the ones that I compared the ideal concept with so technically right now the NCA batteries are particularly reliable compared to rest of them and this is why we have a graphical demonstration of how the cost of NCA batteries will specifically look like all right so for NCA battery pack this is just a cell and for the battery pack when we are talking about the whole vehicle integration the pack assembly maybe is the the cost of it was actually in the year 2009 990 to 1220 whereas it has been significantly reduced to 360 to 440 in the year 2020 all right so what we have done is talk about the battery size the integration how it's assembled and in the conclusion what i've done is that uh, the waco uh, electric vehicle and lithium ion battery business hold promise to large potential profit pools of both incumbents and new player however investing in this technology entails substantial risk so even though Right now, we are getting a significantly amazing result as in decreased cost of production of cells and integration of cells, but to shift and make a shift from NCA to let's say LFP requires a lot of cost and a lot of studies beforehand before we actually go on and start manufacturing LFP batteries. So this is something which is a, a risk benefit uh, that the manufacturers need to take and um, yeah this is pretty much the whole article that talks about and I hope you like this video this is a different approach of presentation because I've explained everything using the pictorial and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't thanks for watching